Hi, it's Marie Louise here, the Danish painter, and welcome to my channel where I help landscape painters loosen up their painting style and paint with more confidence. In today's video, I have something special for you. I wanted to uh, show you my process when I do my preliminary sketches and, and work for larger paintings. So I thought what better way than to show you from beginning to end everything in real time along with my commentary and my thoughts for the process uh, as it's unfolding. So um, I hope this will be useful to you. If the video gets very long I might have to do part one and part two but uh, we'll see. For now, let's uh, jump straight into the video and uh, get started. Looking at the reference sketch, um, this is just a photo I took <clears throat> a few weeks ago. I uh, was driving along and I pulled over and I just snapped this photo out of the side of the window of the car. Um, in itself, the photo doesn't have all the elements I would like to see in, uh, in a great painting. But uh, <clears throat> the elements I do like are um, the sky to ground ratio. I also um, in particular like the shape of the... The farmer took his uh, his tractor. I think these are tractor tracks. Um, it's kind of a rounded, curved um, motion or shape uh, at the bottom of the painting. And I I don't for some reason I really like this shape and I want to include it in my painting. So that's what speaks to me the strongest when I'm looking at this uh, at this photo. The sky was incredibly blue. You can see it almost looks uh, unnatural. So I might want to tone that down. Also the cloud, uh, the big cloud uh, in the upper left and middle. Uh, it looks very round uh, and circular and uh, also a bit unnatural. So I think I, I would want to uh, change the shape of that one also. Furthermore, I think I would like a focal point somewhere on the horizon. So I will um, probably enlarge. Uh, you can see there's some trees on the horizon line um, and some windmills, I think they are. <clears throat> but I am um, I'm definitely I'm going to enlarge some of the trees, uh, maybe make a uh, grouping of trees that are going to be a bit uh, larger. And that's going to be my focal point. Um, I might change things uh, around a bit as I move along in the painting, but um, this is just a sketch. Uh, I like to do um, a bunch of these to uh, warm up and uh, it's a good way for uh, just to get uh, the creative juices uh, going and uh, Sometimes they end up um, as a basis for larger paintings. The ground uh, part is about one third of the photo and I, I like that ratio so I'm going to keep that also kind of curved so that it's, it's lower on the side. So I'll keep that. This is just very loosely drawn. Um, and I have these kind of low lying clouds here in the distance. There might be some some rain also on the horizon up there. I'm not sure, but it's definitely darker. And then we have that big round cloud up here. I'm not going to copy it exactly because I feel it's um, it is unnatural looking. So maybe I will connect it to the corner over here. Kind of like this, I'm just making, I don't know, that looks a bit weird. 
maybe like that. I'm kind of making some squiggly marks. So I'm not holding the pencil like this and drawing it out very accurately. I'm actually holding it at the end like this to uh, I'll be able to move my wrist a lot more and it will keep my marks looser. So I think this is uh, this is it. Actually, let me just move the horizon line a bit up here. Maybe make a field. And then I want um, I want a focal point somewhere on on the horizon. And um, I like the the smaller trees that seem to be out here. I'm not going to draw them out as such, but um, I'll make a larger grouping here of some of some trees that will also help to give some um, some depth and some dimension to the painting. And then there was this curved uh, shape here from the tractor that I really liked. Um, maybe it's not going to, uh, but it kind of, I like put the, the lines, look how they kind of lead the viewer's eye into the painting and then you're traveling around looking at at the different things. So this is just a um, a quick basis for uh, my sketch and uh, I want to start putting on some colors now. If you have seen some of my other videos you will uh, know that I really like to use a very large brush um, I often get questions about these bend type of brushes that I'm using. Um, it's from the hardware store and basically it um, it's made so that you can paint behind things. Uh, and uh, usually there are, they are left over and they sell them off much cheaper than the ones with the straight handle. For, for me it doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's the same brush, uh, it's just cheaper. In fact, I think I've uh, come to uh, maybe prefer these uh, bent brushes. But anyhow, I start with a large brush and I, um, I'm i gonna block in the big shapes and get some paint on here. And you might be thinking, ooh, well, uh, that looks uh, like a huge brush and how are you going to control um, and not paint into my drawing. But I'm not going to worry about that because I want to keep the painting loose. Um, and the best way to do that uh, for me is to use this oversized brush. So uh, let me show you how I do it and, and get some paint on here. I will list the colors I'm using in the description below. I'm going to start with a thin wash of some burnt sienna here just to give the, the overall painting a nice warm feeling. It would also help to unify the colors in the end. And um, you might be thinking if I treated my paper in any way and I actually I haven't. The paper I use here, I know it's uh, fairly thick, so it can handle quite a bit of water. But uh, if you don't have paper that uh, can handle a lot of paper or a lot of water, then uh, it's a good idea to gesso your paper before this step. Anyway, I'm. Uh, I kind of have this warm base layer now and uh, I'm going to start um, by adding some colors to the sky. I do feel that that blue sky is just a wee bit too blue so I will tone it down a little bit. I'm moving the brush in different directions and kind of scrubbing the paint on here also. 
It will keep the edges soft and uh, it will make the clouds look more cloud-like. I'm gonna come in with some paper towel and, and adjust as well. I like a lot of thin layers. So this is not going to be the final layer. So don't worry if it's not covering covering it, it all. So I'm just going to rub a bit with some paper towel. It's a bit moist, my paper towel. So And then while the, the paint is still wet, I can kind of smear it in. I'm going to drag the paint down onto the horizon line here. I'm looking a bit towards my reference photo, but I don't want it to lock my expectations of how I want the painting to, to turn out. It's a reference only. Now see what look what happened. This cloud up here it kind of turned out to be uh, round again because I was looking at the reference photo and not really thinking. So let me just adjust that. I didn't clean my brush in between here, so I'm just gonna. The cloud also has kind of a some shadow on this side. So let's get that in here. And then there was this on the horizon line here. Well, I think that's that's fine for now. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that for now and work a bit on the on the ground area down here. We can see that uh, there's quite a bit of value difference between the sky and the ground. We have this uh, very dark brown color down here um, which is the basically it's soil and then there's a green field over here. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna mix up a dark brown color. I'm using a brush that's a bit smaller, but that's only because I don't have a clean one. So, okay, that was a bit, could be a bit more generous with the paint here. Let me just take down that edge a bit. And I'm going to use the other end of my brush to just scrape into the paint, making those marks from the, yeah, I don't know what they are, tire tracks from a tractor or something. Okay. Don't want to keep going too much, too long. Come in and adjust it later. And let's see that green field over there. Okay, here we go. There's actually some green up here, but I'm just gonna, I'll just hint at it. Oops, doesn't matter. I 
I'm going to um, finish the sky before I uh, add in the details here on the horizon line. So let me just add a little bit of green here to the foreground area. I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. It's uh, In fact, it's quite dry. And uh, sometimes I like to separate the bristles like this to uh, be able to kind of make some expressive marks that looks a bit like foreground grasses and, and such. Okay, I want to make sure the sky area is uh, dry before I continue. We'll take a look at that in part two of this painting series. So see you in the next episode. And thank you for watching.